put me in the eye It's all because of Jesus, he the reason I'm alive I live by faith, by grace, you know that I ain't gotta strive They told me, tone it down My name is Captain Crunch. This is Tony the Tiger. Tony Montana. Welcome to the Boat Parade. The Boat Parade. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. As always, today we're talking about <laughs> the series sweep versus the Florida Panthers. Sweet, 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 sweet. That's right. The Tampa Bay Lightning swept the Florida Panthers four games. Did them dirty. It was awesome. That um, shows you that a president's trophy means nothing. <laughs> well, it that's the thing. that I can't remember what year. Maybe 2012, 2013 was the last team that won the President's Trophy and then won the Stanley Cup. Well, yeah, because we won in 2019 and then got sweeped. Well, I wanted to talk about that a little bit later, but you mentioned it. I think that the Tampa Bay Lightning getting swept by the Columbus Blue Jackets in the 2019 playoffs may have been the best thing that's ever happened. Don't say that. For the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, so you're you're predicting now, we have this on record, that the Panthers are going to win the Stanley Cup next year. No, I'm not predicting Because that. that's what, what we did. What I'm saying is is that the Blue Jackets sweeping the Lightning was the best thing that could have happened to the Lightning. Because going through the failure of that, going through everybody saying these guys can't do it, they don't have the guts to pull it off because they had been on some tough losses there. That was a to hard then loss. learn from that, yeah. Coop and the boys learn how to win in the playoffs, and then they come out in 2020 and now they've won ever since. So it's a learning experience from that. Pick that's a powerful statement. They've won ever since. Correct. That's Golly. why I'm saying it's been the most impactful thing that's happened to the Lightning was losing that series because some things, they require a turnaround to happen. I think that was one of those things. that The Lightning would have just won that year and, and not gone all the way to the Stanley Cup but maybe won a couple rounds. I don't think that the Lightning are today what they would be, which is the two-time right. defending champ Stanley Cup Tampa Bay Lightning. About the three-peat. Maybe go for four. Don't I say think that. Not yet. We have work to do. No, we're gonna we're gonna three peat. I just it's May twenty fourth, two thousand twenty two, and I, Captain Crunch, am telling you the Lightning are winning a third in a row. Um it's hard if we don't, Lightning fans, blame it on Captain over here. Captain genius. Uh the only difference not necessarily a difference, but what I think is interesting with the Panthers is they traded away a lot of draft picks to put the team together that they got this season. Real quick, don't take long on it. Who'd they get? Giroux? Who else they, did they get? They got Giroux. There was like two other small trades they did like we did with Hagel. Like they, they swapped a couple of their guys out. I don't remember their names. I love Brandon Hagel. Yeah, he's m probably my favorite new – well, Corey Nick Perry Paul. is amazing. We love all these new guys. Corey I mean, Perry was an offseason, but, but Nick Paul and Brandon Hagel. Nick Paul and Hagel. Great. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think they're 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 the same breed of player. They're hardworking. They're young. They want it really bad. Corey Perry's the same way. Those three guys, in my opinion, have played key roles. And Kalorn. And, and Kal well, yeah, he's not new. But he's those, not new. Those three guys plus Kalorn. No, McDonough too. Ryan, all, yeah, all of them. Ryan, Mc well, everybody. Stammer was by himself, like down the ice, ramming someone into the boards, just to set an example as a captain for the team. That this we're and let me, you know what? Let me just say this. I want to I want to say this to the world. I want to say this to everybody in the NHL, everybody watching. Jeez. In I'm Tampa, nervous. in Tampa, the Tampa Bay Lightning, I just want a public service announcement is we're still hungry and we're still fighting and we're still going to fight. If you think because we won 2 years in a row that we're going to take it easy and try to do anything, we are coming as the most aggressive coming for your neck team in the playoffs. And if, the, if this sweep of the Panthers doesn't show you that just because you can get fancy in the regular season and score some points with a couple names that will be forgotten about in a few years doesn't mean anything. We're coming for the third cup, and when we get it, you could just mark it down that we said we were coming. Everybody thought they were going to come into this two-time champion pretty boy team. that had No, we, we got in there. We made some key trades in Nick Paul and Hagel and getting Corey Perry in the offseason, and they've been grinding, and they're hungry for this. But the hunger of guys like Kalorn to get three is is also unparalleled. These guys are hungry to get this third cup, and I, I think we were underestimated going into the playoffs, and I think this series is proof that we're still a championship team. Well, I was going to say some of that. I think you may have just put a target on the Lightning's back, which, you know, Go ahead. It is what it is. But this is their Stammer punching. This is their 10th straight series win. 
It's the first team to do that since the 82 New York Islanders. The only other franchise to do that was the Canadians. Yeah. So we joined. They did it as, twice. As a third. So during those 10 series wins that the, Lightnings, that the Lightning have had, they've only gone to game seven one time last series. And then when asked about the 10 consecutive wins, Alex Kalorn said, <laughs> well, 12 wins sounds better, right? Yo, I love him, bro. So the Lightning did a great job all series of what they've really done a good job with at 2020. They really just get up by a goal. Then they build a wall from blue line to blue line, yeah. and they play really tough defense. I think that was one of the keys that's, that allowed them to succeed over the Panthers. The Panthers, they have phenomenal, what you would call in basketball, transition offense. Yeah, That's where they got a lot of their goals from. If you go back and you watch a lot of the scoring chances that the Panthers had throughout the year, it was always on like an odd man rush yeah. up the ice and then make some good passes and then bury it. The Lightning really only allowed one goal like that all series in the game one with Duclair. Well, they had um, some good chances in game three early that they just didn't capitalize on. Like, you could see their offense trying to put it together, but it, it, it seemed like they stayed at their regular season, like, play, the way they were playing, and they just didn't bring it up a notch like everybody else did in the playoffs. For sure. So they slowed the rush down, uh, not allowing that many chances. The Panthers, during the season, had the highest goals scored per game in the last 25 years. 4.11 <laughs> oh goals scored a game. And they I didn't know that. So they scored 4.11 goals on average all season. That's then in this whole series, we allowed three goals, which was the same number of goals that Corey Perry scored. <laughs> so that's pretty good maths right there. Golly, man. Well, it's cr the, the differential has to be probably the most in history, right, as far as your regular season performance and then second series playoff performance. I know it's kind Maybe. of a Definitely kind of their a power target. play going one for 26. That's like probably the biggest well, drop off. I was talking to a buddy of mine, and I think it's important to note that they did have a coaching debacle, and then this new coach came in early in the season. And in watching this series, man, I I really don't think he knows what he's. You can see the gap. I, I, you can see. I don't want to say bad about him, but he he looked like he had no idea what he was doing facing this Tampa Bay Lightning team. He didn't know what to do, and Coop knows how to adapt. And that's what Coop learned that lesson. I think in 2019 is really when he said, "All right, we need to do some things to change." They right. figured it out in 2020, perfected it in 2021. It's continuing now. Well, I guess that's some some. I know I was harsh on the Panthers people, but that that's kind of good it's news. Okay. It's kind of good news for you guys because we were there four years ago, in your shoes. We had a great regular season, one of the best in our franchise history, and then we got swept by the Blue Jackets. It's but not we like did, we got you know. We did probably what they're not going to do and kept the same team core for the most part. The, I don't know. Well, they definitely are going to keep if they can afford to. They're going to they're going to keep they, Herbido. I but they trade away the farm and then now what do you have left? They got to be careful. That's a fact. Florida, you got to be careful what you do in this offseason. So, Corey Perry in this series, I feel like was a key. Not only did he score 3 goals, but he was taking over Braden Point's spot where he just hangs out down low in front of the point. <laughs> <laughs> and I th that's how he got his three goals. So I think Fast that was a huge fill. thing. <laughs> Definitely. Jeez. And they had a great penalty kill. Obviously, we just mentioned one for 26 in the whole playoffs for the Panthers. Yeah. Lightning allowed the one goal. Um, but, yeah. And then they put their the, – the will to win was the key for the Lightning. Yeah. They like, – like Ryan went on a tirade a minute ago. Tirade. They want to win, and they're going for it. During the series, they had 77 blocked shots. What a number. They were getting hit in the face. They were going down the down the ramp to the locker room. It was like they six were, six they in were one literally, period. <laughs> Vassy had a quote that we'll go over in a, in a minute, but he basically alluded to the fact that there's guys on the team that have broken bones in their body blocking shots, and then they yeah. continue to go out there and play and do so. There's no sport like it, man. They're savages. Golly. Um, you like most people, you like stub your toe getting out of bed in the morning, and you're out for like three days. You call in work sick. You're like, I need, I, you gotta go to the doctor for a broke. Some of these dudes have broken shins, have torn ligaments, to, you know, and they're playing. And you could, you, the craziest thing to me is you almost can't tell. It's not that they're playing through injuries, it's that they're just, they run at such a, like, a, a efficient, hardworking pace that you don't know they're injured. And after the season, yeah. it's like, the only time what? that you could really say, hey, something might be going on was Kucherov in the series one when they yeah. said that he had food poisoning. He literally looked like he was about to die on the ice. No, we 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 were like, yo, Kuch is not looking good right now. Yeah. And it, and it was then it was like game four. He started coming back around and then six and seven he played he played okay. Yeah. And now he's all the way back doing what Kuch does. Um I feel like 
Bobrovsky actually played a really good series for the Panthers. Um, it was really That's quite a statement. Even though they lost and they didn't win a game, <laughs> how many goals did he allow? Not a lot. No, I four would... in game one, two in game two, five in game three, and then two in game four. But how many chances did he save? It was really crucial that I think that Bobrovsky was the goalie for the Blue Jackets in 2019 that swept the Lightning. Yeah, we swept. So now to get that sweep back, and the reason why I say that is because the further that the Lightning got along in the series the more desperate the Panthers were getting to win. Obviously, Lightning win game one, then you go into game two. Now the Panthers feel like, well, we have to win this one because now if we lose, now we have two games on the road. Right. So now they're playing desperate in that. Now they're down two games, and now they have the first game in Tampa. Well, if we go down this game, now we're down 0-3. And then obviously game four, hey, if we lose, then we're done. So every game was like desperation. You have the defensemen for the Panthers creeping up more and more to get involved in offense, which allowed for the Lightning to get a lot of breakaway chances. That's why I say Bobrovsky had a great series because he held strong when he had to to keep the Panthers in the game. Well, and I, I agree with you. I think the problem was that they weren't scoring the way they, they're set up to as a team. So normally, you know, you get two goals against the Panthers, you're still going to lose the game because they're going to get 3-4. But uh, the difference for us, which which we'll talk a little bit about here, but a lot uh, uh, here soon is Vasilevsky because if – well, Vasilevsky and the shot blocking has pretty much made the series for us. I was going to say this um, in our last video, but I think if this makes sense to you, I don't know if it makes sense to you guys, but the, when I was watching the series, we were at game three, and then I watched one and two, obviously. Um, I didn't get to watch four, but it felt like to me from the beginning to the end of every game, we were playing as though we had a one-point advantage even when we didn't. Like, we, we were already focused on blocking shots on not getting cut off in the passing lanes if we were if we were in transition but like it seemed like zero to zero we were still playing like we already had an advantage and I think it really broke up the rhythm of the Panthers because they could never get the momentum because we we kept demanding with the way we were playing was like we had an advantage and I think because we weren't coming back trying to smack this this like heavy four check and then this this super fast offense like a lot of the teams that they would play I think it, it kind of took them by surprise it's like they we almost gave them shots knowing they weren't gonna fall it was like I don't know it's like this massive disrespect fest it was like take a shot somebody's getting in the way of that shot to break their shin and as imagine this you're shooting these 90 mile an hour breaking shins hitting people in the face and they just keep coming back at you it's like eventually you're like I don't think I can take this guy he keeps getting up off the ground and he keeps coming back at me you're getting worn out before these guys are losing. The and, Lightning you know. are definitely mentally playoff sound tough. And so they've been there. They know what they need to do. So yeah, then to be right. able to show that that dominance almost was crucial. Um, I'm not going to go into who scored all the goals and assists. But what I will say is, is that the first <laughs> series against the Maple Leafs was – really spreading the wealth across the team. There was something like 13 guys that scored during the first round. Yeah. During the second round, I think it was the core guys coming alive. A lot of Cooch, a lot of Colton, a lot of Perry, a lot of Stamkos. Yeah. They were getting in there. And so now, like, they're, everybody's hot. We could be dangerous going into the next round versus either the Penguins or the – not the Penguins. Rangers. The Rangers or the Hurricanes. Or Carolina. I'm, I think we're going to end up playing Carolina just because um, – I, I in in the the little bit that I've watched of the series between Carolina and uh, and New York, I don't think the Rangers have the kind of team that are going another round in the playoffs. Uh, just the way they they have a great but, goalie. But what a series would it be between Igor Shosturkin and Andre Vasilevsky? <laughs> yeah, but you know I think it would be a little more disappointing than you think. I I, th- I think that the here's what I see: the Rangers is a team that we could sweep. The Rangers is wow. a team we could win in five. The Carolina is not. Carolina, in my opinion, is like a better version of the Panthers. I wouldn't say that. I would say they're different. Okay, they well, play. I don't think we're sweeping Carolina, and we swept the Panthers. So all I'm saying is in their differences, they're a heavy – when when you look at the weight of their team, they have a heavy offensive bias. They're an explosive team. They forecheck amazingly. They, and their forecheck's incredible, and we struggled, we struggled with them with in the them. regular season. And partially because they're four checks, so so we'll see. We'll do a we'll, we'll do a preview once we know who we're gonna play. For now, 
let's get healthy, let the boys get some rest. And but I'm still concerned about that because whenever they come off not playing for a week, it takes them like two games to get back into it. That's especially in the regular season. It's like even if they had like 48 hours off or well, 72 like, I think hours, they started like, boom. The, the worst part of their season was after they only played like six games in February. Yeah. And they had like two weeks off. Then they come back and now they stink. For they like lost like five games. March in a row. was like terrible. It was so bad. I don't know. I think the rest this time. I think Coop's gonna actually give them a few days to just sit and and rest, get some injuries figured out. Obviously, um, they're gonna do a lot of behind the scenes looking at these guys, what's going on in their body, and say who's who's gonna play through what, who needs to sit a little bit less minutes. Yeah. Um, Last get, thing, you know, I love the like the. The way that they keep secrets in hockey, they're just like, <laughs> "Oh, he has a lower body injury. He, yeah, he could, game be, to game. could be back tomorrow." <laughs> in football, they're like, "Oh, he has a grade three oblique strain. Yeah, he'll be out seven weeks and four days." And it's like, "What's you know what? Why? You what's know the, what? You know what I think it is? I think it's because I, I know the the game's starting to change as as more money's getting involved." But I think ho- you're going to hate when I say this. Probably. I'm, I'm sorry. You're going to hate this. He, I remember, know. he's the football guy. I think hockey is not a superstar sport like football is. And because it's so team focused, when someone's injured, it, it's they're, they're hiding the information within the team until the team goal is complete. In football, I know college football is a little different, but in pro football, there's a lot of big names and superstars and huge I actually, contracts agree with you I don't hate that. and so Good i take. i just i do i i that's a that's that's i don't even know what to say i'm what speechless. A he agrees with me you know no i mean hockey i just feel like they're protecting their team aspect hockey is the kind of sport i could see them taking all the names off the jerseys and it's just about the scoreboard and and i love that i love that about hockey so um you know when we think about Braden point we want to see him on the ice but we know that the boys are going to go out there and fight uh to win no matter and it's for him and it's with him um and and there, nobody's taking their jersey off and running off the side of the field. So, shout out Antonio Brown. Shout out AB the Thank rapper. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, clicking that bell, and we'll see you next time on the boat parade. Love you guys. You know you can look me in the eye. It's all because of Jesus. He the reason I'm alive. I live by faith, by grace. You know that I ain't gotta strive. They told me tone it down.